Hi guys, my name is Aditya and I am the CEO of Automaski. I am going to be talking about practical quantum computing because over the last decade or so, we have realized that people come up with the impression that the pricing that Automaski has of its quantum computers or offerings is exorbitant. While people have started understanding uh, quantum computing, you know, the general, you know, citizens of the world have some knowledge of quantum computing from the media, articles, press releases, etc. in the last one or so years. A lot of people don't understand how a practical quantum computer will work and how is that different from Automaski's perfect quantum computer which has infinite precision, infinite accuracy and infinite scalability. And then the biggest doubt obviously is, is the pricing, you know, uh, how much will it cost? What is a reasonable price? What is a fair value of such an offering? Now, we are going to be talking about efficiency, accuracy, scale, but primarily from a financial or economic point of view. Let's get started. Now, one statutory warning, please proceed with caution. If this presentation goes against your belief system, then please ignore this presentation, stop the video and focus on things you are passionate about. If you are respectful and polite, I would love to answer any questions you might have or listen to your thoughts. You can always email info at automaski.com. Now, there are various qubit technologies. Everybody knows that quantum computers use qubits to do their calculations and companies across the world are using various qubit technologies to implement their qubits and build their quantum computer on top of that. Superconducting loops is one which Google, IBM, Rigetti, D-Wave, Intel, Raytheon uh, are using for their quantum computer. Trapped ions is another which Continuum, which is earlier Honeywell, uh, Quantum Factory, INQ, AQ, TQ, CI, Oxford Ionics, Electron, etc. are using. Silicon Quantum Dots, uh, Intel and HRL. Topological quantum qubits don't exist today and there is no theoretical proof that they will work or they can exist, but Microsoft is pursuing that approach for the last uh, one and a half, one, one and a half decades. But nothing exists in the world of topological quantum computing today. Now, diamond vacancies is another one, which quantum brilliance, diatope, quantum diamond tech, envision, element six, etc., are pursuing. There are others, photonic, etc., etc. But we'll leave that out for now. So, the first thing you have to understand is when you have a qubit and gates are operating on it, gates. Gates are basically operations on qubits. These are like logic gates. And the execution of gates on, on qubits, the sequence of which is basically a quantum circuit. Now, whatever be the state of a qubit, you know, it will relax. Okay. Uh, basically, if a qubit has a certain state, which is excited state, it will lose energy and go to the ground state. Now, this relaxation time or the loss, basically you are losing your computation, right? You are losing the state of your computation. This is one of the ways you can lose that. This relaxation time is called longitudinal relaxation process. This is called T1. Okay. And so basically the qubit grows from, goes from an excited state to a ground state. That is T1. Now, there is something called T2 time, which is the transverse relaxation time. Basically, a qubit can have a phase and when it loses the phase coherence or it loses the phase, uh, this, this, uh, this phase can represent, you know, superposition or multiple states of, uh, you know, a qubit, etc. Uh, the, the information that it holds and this time is called T2 time. 
this will all cause errors and you know problems in your quantum computer your quantum computer has to finish all of its computations before any of these time lapses now there is a relationship between t2 and t1 sometimes it is very strict depending on the qubit technology i'll come to that in the last line there is something also called a t2 star time basically when you have an ensemble of qubits okay the collective phase coherence or dephasing time is called t2 star time and the relationship goes like this t2 star is less than t2 which is less than 2 into t1 time so t1 time is actually the most uh, limiting so uh, this is basically called the coherence decoherence problem your qubit you know becomes decoherent and you cannot do any computations and uh, nothing works after that now if you look at these five technologies qubit technologies the qubits in superconducting loops can stay coherent for only 0 0.00005 seconds that is really small even if you are operating your gates at nanoseconds latencies you'll only be able to do a couple of thousand of those gates. And the accuracy superconducting loops can achieve is 99.4 for a single operation. So as you do more and more operations, this 99.4% accuracy gets compounded and you will actually end up with an accuracy of uh, you know 20% or 3%. If you do a real world problem, you will probably get an accuracy of 0.0000001% and which basically means that you won't get the answer in any reasonable fashion now uh, because with every operation this thing gets compounded in powers 99.4 into 99.4 that's the accuracy of uh, uh, you know if you have two operations like that trapped ions are based on ions and they are more stable but and, and they can be coherent for more than a thousand seconds so that is like uh, around 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And they have an accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. This might sound very impressive, but to solve a real world problem on a quantum computer, you actually require an accuracy of 99.999999, maybe 18 or 20 or 15 nines percent accuracy, depending on the problem you're trying to solve. So the next is silicon quantum dots. It can maintain a coherence for 0 0.03 seconds and has 99% accuracy. Uh, topological qubits, like I said, don't exist. And uh, we're not sure if uh, they will be uh, practically possible. Now, diamond vacancies uh, can maintain coherence for around 10 seconds and they have an approximate 99.2% accuracy. Uh, I'm talking about accuracies of a single operation. Or, or the gate fidelity. Now, there is also another problem. When you have a quantum circuit or a problem to solve and you are using qubits as variables, you might need to operate on any two qubits. Uh, you might need to operate between any two qubits to solve your problem, right? So ideally, in a real world problem, uh, all your qubits need to be connect connectable to all the other qubits, which means for a universal perfect quantum computer, you require n by n connectivity. But we live in a physical 3D world. How, how do you even connect qubits together in physical 3D space? So let's look at Rigetti. Rigetti has a gate-based quantum computer. Basically, it has, you know, circuits and gates. And... Uh, it uses a layout similar to this. So each qubit can be connected to three other qubits at, at once. Uh, IBM, which is one of the world's leaders, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, in quantum computing, uses so and such similar layouts. And each qubit is connected to three or four qubits. Now, in a gate-based quantum computer, one can argue that we can always swap the qubits and move them around and, and get any arbitrary two qubits to interact, but it is practically very difficult to do so because uh, 
you incur a lot of error as you move qubits around using swap gates and every operation will cost you a compounding effect in errors and it will also increase the time which will lead to decoherence and it will also increase the depth of the circuit so it increases complexity so what is the best thing to have a fully n by n connected quantum computer the other type of quantum computers which are used for optimization these are called quantum annealers and uh, d wave which is a world leader in quantum annealers uh, uses such you know layouts so it has a pegasus layout which allowed 15 qubits to be connected simultaneously and off late it came up with a zephyr layout which allows uh, you know this topology allows a qubit to be connected to 20 other qubits but if you had to run I mean, if you have an optimization problem where any two variables can have a factor that needs to be increased or decreased or, you know, uh, uh, an impact or a bearing on another pa parameter, uh, another variable, which means that an ideal quantum computer or an annealer that can solve all optimization problems perfectly will have full n by n connectivity, which is simply not possible in physical 3D space in the world which in which we live in. Now, if you were to take such an ideal fully n by n connected layout and a uh, uh, connected problem and try to solve it using one of these annealers, Pegasus can do 177 qubit fully connected problems. So while, you know, uh, Pegasus supports uh, 5000 qubits and Zephyr supports 7000 qubits, uh, these are two different versions of the quantum annealers. With uh, 5000 qubits, it can actually solve 177 qubit fully connected optimization problems. Everything else is an approximation or, or a, a best effort solution, uh, a solution on a best effort basis. Now, if I put all these technologies, you know, on one line and put the connectivity capability on the other, Superconducting loops have around 9, uh, the ability to have uh, 1 qubit connected to 9 other qubits. Trapped in the maximum showcase till I think 2019 or 20 was uh, 1 qubit connected to 20 other qubits. Silicon quantum dots, 1 connected to 2 other qubits. Topological, don't exist today. Diamond vacancies, uh, 1 qubit connected to 6 other qubits. This is because of the crystalline diamond structure, etc. Now, there are various, you know, benefits and disadvantages to each of these technologies, but I'm not going to go into that. Today, I'm going to be talking about accuracy, errors, you know, the costs, etc. And uh, let's move on. Now, what is the state of the art outside Automatsky today? People, there is a lot of hyperbole. You know, people do not realize, you know, uh, what is the real, you know, uh, capability out there, you know, outside Automaski? You know, we had scenarios where people came to us and said, you know, what is so special about your offering? And uh, people are talking about million qubit quantum computers, you know, everywhere. So let's let's see what is the state of the art outside Automaski today. Now, if you want to measure the capability of a gate-based uh, quantum computer. I am not going to talk going to talk about uh, quantum annealers. Annealers are used for optimization and where the measure is obviously how far from a perfect solution are you uh, uh, in maximization or minimization of the problem, right? But in a gate-based quantum computer, if you have a circuit where you have qubits on one side, so let's say you have four qubits and you do four two qubit uh, gate operations on it. So basically it becomes uh, a circuit of four qubits with four gate operations on each qubit. So basically you randomize the selection of which qubit you are going to operate on and you operate using some random two qubit gate. And with four qubits, you do four two gate operations on each qubit and you do the measurement. This is called four by four. It's a square, you know, circuit. And then we say that the quantum volume is 16. That is not 4 into 4, that is actually 2 to the power 4. So 2 to the power 3 is 8, 2 to the power 2 to the power 1 is 2, 2 to the power 2 is 4, 
2 to the power 3 is 8, 2 to the power 4 is 16. So in a square 4 by 4 circuit or some computer which can at least run this perfectly, you know, 4 by 4 circuit, you get a quantum volume, you assume that the quantum computer has a quantum volume of 2 to the power 4, which is 16, you know, and now if you look at the quantum volume records, you know, of all the quantum computers that are, you know, available today on the shelf, uh, we'll, we'll look at Honeywell, uh, Honeywell has transformed into continuum, uh, they are world leaders in, in one of the world leaders in this space. And uh, IBM has a quantum computer with 127 qubits. Now, these are physical qubits, obviously. And uh, what they can achieve is a full 7 qubit by 7 gate uh, circuit. They can solve that much perfectly. So, their quantum volume capability is 2 to the power 7 or which is 128. Continuum has the capability to solve problems or quantum circuits perfectly with 11 qubits each perform each uh, going through 11 gates so 11 by 11 circuit and so 2 to the power 11 is 2048 so continuum is actually uh, the leader of the space with the uh, you know 2048 quantum volume now uh, it looks very flattering if you put a large number like 2048 for an 11 by 11 circuit. You might as well have called it, uh, you know, uh, a quantum volume of 11 because it was a square, square circuit anyway. But 11 would look, you know, very unimpressive. So there is a certain amount of, you know, self-flattering going on when uh, this metric was designed. Uh, because... With, with 20 by 20, you would reach a number which is in millions and it will look very impressive. But 20 by 20 is like a toy which can't even, you know, uh, multiply or, or divide uh, uh, 8 or 10 digit number. So, uh, now if you look at this chart which I got from a report and if you compare this with Automaskey's quantum computer, which is perfect and, you know, infinite precision, infinite, uh, you know, billion qubit scale, then I would say Automaskey's quantum computer is 1 billion qubits by 1 billion uh, gate operations. And that is 2 to the power 1 billion quantum volume. Now, now you will see that there is no comparison between this and that and the economics of what we offer versus the pricing of these services. And uh, that is why it was necessary to have this presentation today to explain all that. Now, what happens, you know, in practical quantum computing when you have noise and errors? While I'm not going to go into an elaborate theory of, you know, how error happens and what kind of errors and how to, you know, write surface codes, uh, create surface codes to, you know, prevent errors, etc. But I'm going to give you a, a small taste of, you know, the impact errors and noise have on your quantum circuits and how that, how that will work in comparison to a perfect quantum computer. So here is an Excel sheet, a, a picture of a calculation in an Excel sheet. Let's say you have a single qubit gate fidelity of 99% and the number of single qubit gates in your circuit is 300 and they are applying to qubits in some random order. We assume that they are more or less evenly applying to each qubit, you know, in, in the same proportion. Uh, the double qubit gate fidelity is 98% and the number of double qubit gates is 200. Triple qubit gate fidelity is 96%. Triple qubit gates are 110 the total number of qubits in the circuit is 80. Okay. So if you look at this and if you have a noise factor of 91% environmental noise or whatever and you calculate the, the factor that will, you know, uh, from the errors of single qubit operations and double qubit operations and triple qubit operations and in incorporating the noise factor, you will end up with an effective factor of the accuracy of a single operation uh, of, of a single uh, qubit. And then you get, let's say, 79%. The next thing is how many measurements you're going to make. Now, uh, you know, people, you know, uh, uh, 
a common layman does not understand that unlike a laptop or a server uh, a quantum computer has to be the same circuit on a quantum computer has to be executed thousands or millions of times and measured at the end of each execution uh, that is how you sample from the you know state of the results so it is not you execute a circuit once and you get the result okay now but since the accuracy is very low uh, i i propose that we run this quantum circuit for a billion times the probability of getting an answer is this so the number of times you will get the right answer in 1 billion measurements is only 17 or 16 you will have to take all the answers from each of those 1 billion measurements and try it out in some way to verify if the answer works or not or take it at face value or whatever but in 16 out 16 or 17 out of 1 billion measurements or circuit executions you're going to get the correct answer this is so so you know far away from a perfect quantum computer okay now this has an impact on execution time also so if you are if your gate is executing and, and taking a time of 0. 0.00005 seconds the number of gates you are executing per second is 20,000 let's say and the total gates in the circuit which we have mentioned above 300 plus 200 plus 110 is 610 the circuit execution time is one single circuit execution time is 0. 0.03 seconds but if you have to do it for a billion you know times and measure the circuit a billion times it will take around 353 days this is the problem when you operate with noise and errors and if you could eliminate all such imperfections errors noise and have a computer which is perfect with infinite precision with billion qubit you know scale etc then you would understand that none of these would limit you uh, these calculations would limit you right and uh, that is what automasky does now the other thing to understand is that there is a difference between logical gates and physical gates what is the difference a logical qubit sorry not gates qubits logical qubit is one that you use in your calculation but physically implemented on a quantum computer one logical qubit will require 10 to the power 3 which means a thousand or 10,000 physical qubits uh, to correct the error to a reasonable degree so that your relatively small but you know a problem can at least execute reasonably well I mean infinite precision would require infinite physical qubits uh, that is the explanation so when people say that they are going to build a thousand qubit uh, you know quantum computer what they mean is that they are going to create a thousand physical qubit quantum computer which again if you take a reverse reasoning uh, would result in one or two you know or maybe three you know logical qubits that can be used in fault tolerant uh, computations so uh, each logical qubit requires let's say a thousand to ten thousand physical qubits for error correction to a reasonable degree ibm which is a world leader uh, release its plans to create uh, the next generation of quantum computers for the benefit of this world and we are in 2022 IBM already has a 127 physical qubit uh, quantum computer which you remember was doing uh, you know uh, 7 uh, 2 to the power 7 which is 128 quantum volume they should be launching for a 433 qubit quantum computer by the end of the year uh, thousand qubits by the next year and by the end of the decade they say that they will have a million qubits and beyond now remember when they say a million qubits what they mean is a million physical qubits where a thousand or ten thousand physical qubits will cor correspond to one logical qubit which can be used in a fault tolerant quantum computation so basically we are talking about you know 100 200 logical fault tolerant qubits by the end of the decade 
Now, considering that we don't have perfect quantum computers outside Automasky, every you know article or or that is published, you know about quantum applications focuses on three things: optimization, machine learning, and variational algorithms. Optimization, by the very nature, you don't you just need a good enough answer. You don't need the most optimum perfect solution in the world. I mean. Uh, there is there is a point of depreciating returns in terms of effort you put in to get the most optimum solution and uh, the benefit it will have on your let's say factory operations or optimizing your you know engine timing or whatever so optimization requires a quick and dirty you know approximate solution that is why in the nisc era people are focusing on optimization machine learning again you know is not a perfect science Machine learning, deep learning, etc., are basically function approximation methods, which means they give you an approximation. To what extent is debatable, but uh, they don't warrant a perfect solution. So you know everybody is gung ho about you know quantum machine learning, and there are various uh, there are various articles and videos. Variational algorithms are again a combination of a quantum circuit working along with a classical optimization you know solver. So basically, trying to some solve some quantum problems with uh, you know hybrid you know uh, quantum plus classical computers, where the optimizer on the uh, classical computer like your laptop will guide the quantum computer towards the right solution to varying degrees. No need for a perfect solution. Whatever you get, you take it at face value. So these are the kind of applications people are focusing on on outside Automasky. Now, how much is it going to cost? What are the damages? How much do you have to pay Automasky? How much do you have to pay one of these leading vendors which are selling quantum computers? So what, are, what is the pricing? It is not very clear unless you sign up and you, uh, you, know, you commit. Uh, you won't realize how much it is going to cost if you run a problem of so-and-so size. So how much is it going to cost exactly? So if you look at the prices on the Amazon cloud and the Google cloud for various quantum computing services, you know, uh, uh, the prices are between 0.35, uh, you know, uh, dollars per second to 1.75 dollars per second. And there are various assumptions, you know, that the circuit executes once in 1 millisecond or 10 milliseconds. One execution of a circuit is called a shot. So you say that you run the circuit a thousand times, you, that's a thousand shots. Remember I said, uh, when your accuracy is very low, you'll have to run it a billion times or, or even trillion or gazillions of times to just get the right answer in 16 or 17 uh, out of 1 billion measurements. Now, assuming you take 1 millisecond for a shot, it is going to cost you 0.35 US dollars. And... Uh, the average, uh, you know, qubit second, if you have a one qubit, uh, you know, capability and you use the quantum computer for one second with a calculation that involves one qubit, you will have to pay 0 0.05 US dollars for that one qubit second circuit. Now, uh, the price ranges between 0 0.01 per qubit second to 0 0.09 qubit second for INQ. Rigetti is the least expensive at 0 0.01. On an average, it is 0 0.05 US dollars. Now, the number of seconds in a year is 31.5 million. If you, if you have a quantum computer with one qubit, I'm not even talking about a perfect qubit, just one physical qubit, and you use it for one year, it will cost you 1.575 million dollars. With 33 qubits, you will clock a billion qubit seconds in a year. And a 1,000 physical qubit quantum computer will cost you 1.575 billion per year, assuming the current prices. Assuming the current prices. So there is a caveat. They might drop prices by 20 times, in which this will come to around $100 million. But, you know, uh, a 1,000 physical qubit quantum computer as of today's prices will cost approximately $1.6 billion per year. And these are 1000 physical qubits. You will need 10 to the power 4 physical qubits per logical qubit for an error corrected, you know, uh, uh, quantum computer. 
Therefore, a million qubit physical uh, quantum uh, physical qubit quantum computer will actually offer just 100 to 200 logical qubits, and with today's price, it would cost you 1.575 trillion per year. Remember, the caveat is per as per today's price. They might drop the prices, you know, due to various efficiencies. We're going to look at that also. But as of today, it will cost you one and a half trillion dollars per year. If prices drop by a million times by the end of the decade, you know, where the vendors are projecting they will uh, release a million qubit, physical qubit quantum computer, you will get such a quantum computer for 1.575 million per year. Assuming prices drop by a million times. Now, let us look at some of the real world problems. You have, uh, you know, cytochrome P450 enzyme, which is responsible for drug metabolism and you, are, you want to simulate it. That will require 7.8 billion operations. Operations means gates. In 1434 logical qubits and approximately and to the accuracy you require, each logical qubit would require 9,745 physical qubits. And these are coming from research papers. You can look them up. So this totals 109 billion qubit seconds or simulating, you know, P450 would cost you $5.45 billion just to solve this real world problem. And that is the, you know, uh, the cost that is involved. And... I'm, it is not very clear whether the authors of the paper are, are assuming one circuit execution or, you know, a million circuit executions, uh, you know, included in this cost. But assuming the circuit requires 109 billion qubit seconds to execute, it is $5.45 billion. Now, fertilizers can, can be, you know, you can improve the fixation and uh, reduce the price and energy consumption of production of fertilizers. Simulating fertilizers would require 448 billion qubit seconds or $22.4 billion. And as per Gidney, Craig and Martin, cracking RSA 2048 uh, bit in 8 hours using 20 million noisy qubits will cost $21.6 billion. Now, if you just look at this figure and compare with, with Automaskey's RSA cracking service pricing, Automaskey's RSA cracking service for 2048-bit uh, is priced at $150 million. So even if somebody discounts $21.6 billion by you know 30-40 times, you are still far away from the ballpark price of what Automaskey is offering you. Now, let us, I mean, you can't simply reduce prices. I mean, if you could, I mean, people would. Uh, there are things, there are parts of a quantum computer, there are operations, there are technology costs, there are manufacturing costs, there are operational costs, you know, that are involved. So, let's look at energy costs. Now, a dilution refrigerator is, is a kind of a cooling cryogenic refrigerator that is used to cool qubits to almost zero degree Kelvin and each fridge, each refrigerator can, you know, cool a thousand qubits, let's say. But to uh, run those earlier algorithms, then we would require 10,000 fridges, you know, like we are theoretically assuming you can even put 10,000 such fridges in, in, in a close, you know, stadium kind of a place or whatever or, or, or a 10 acre farm. But assuming you are going to need 10,000 of such fridges and each fridge consumes 50 kilowatts, we are talking about a total consumption of 500 megawatts. Now, if you could improve the fridge so that each fridge can support 10,000 qubits and cool 10,000 qubits with a single fridge, the power consumption would be more manageable at 50 megawatts. Now, the price of uh, per kilowatt hour in US is, is in between 10 cents to 20 cents, which is 0.1 dollars to 0.2 dollars. Assuming 0.2 dollars and a year-long operations, 
at 500 megawatt you are you are spending 876 million dollars per year just on the cooling of a quantum computer at 50 megawatts which is that if a fridge can support 10000 qubits you are still incurring a cost of 87.6 million dollars per year and remember remember this figure 876 million dollars and 87.6 million dollars because in a couple of slides i'm going to tell you how much Automaskey's quantum computers are going to be priced at. And then you will need to compare all of this with the circuit execution costs and the year-long operation costs. Now, what's needed in a quantum computer? You need long coherence time. I told you that the qubit state degenerates, right? Automaskey offers infinite coherence time. You need high connectivity. You need to have qubits that are connected to each other so that you can run any and all kind of you know circuits and problems. Automaskey offers full n by n connectivity. You need high scalability in terms of the number of qubits your quantum computer has, logical qubits obviously, and uh, the number of gates that can operate on such qubits. Automaskey supports billions of qubits and gates to perfect execution. You need high fault tolerance, low error rates, low noise, high fidelity, blah, blah, blah. Automaskey offers you infinite precision, fidelity, zero errors and noise. What else? You need a way to initialize these qubits to any state that you require your quantum circuit to begin execution with. For example, you want to read an image into the circuit or whatever, you know. So you need, you might need to initialize qubits in any arbitrary state, which would require a quantum RAM. Automaskey supports arbitrary initialization of qubits and encodings of qubits. You will need universal quantum gates. So every quantum computer has to support a universal quantum gate set, a minimum set of gates that give uh, it the attributes of a universal quantum computer, which can theoretically solve any problem you can throw at a quantum computer. Automaskey supports any gate you can dream of, any quantum gate. Any arbitrary gate can be executed on a Automaskey quantum computer. And you have to be able to uh, do measurements, you, you know, without errors. In an Automaskey quantum computer, you can measure any time, state doesn't collapse, you can clone states, you can mix a quantum program with a classical program. And this is not a variational kind of a circuit we are talking about. We are talking about an integrated quantum classical, you know, execution. And uh, you might need flying qubits to, to, you know, take the state from one quantum computer to the other quantum computer. In between Automaskey's quantum computers, we support infinite precision, infinite flying qubits. So the problem is settled. You can have one Automaskey computer in Bangalore, one in in a data center in US and between them you can transfer your quantum state and calculations and work in a distributed quantum computing fashion. Now beat this. After listening to all this, if I tell you Automaskey will launch a 500 logical qubit quantum computer, which now you know will be better than a 5 million physical qubit quantum computer for just 50 million dollars per year plus taxes beat that. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can email us at info at Thank you.